Hey everyone, welcome back to another KSP video. This is, I would say, a part two of my rocket building tutorial. Uh, Wolfrain sent me a ship and he says he has problems getting this into the air if I could take a look at it. So let's just take a quick look at the actual build. I loaded it as it is. It of course has a mech jab, so I had to load on that as well. And uh, let's see what we have here. Obviously I'm going to launch it as it is and see what the problem is. Uh, let's just take a look at the stage, and then I'll actually criticize the actual build of what he did. So, but we'll do that after. So let's just firstly take a look at the staging. The staging, I see it's a little bit wrong because I do have the boosters and then the decoupler, so I'm a little bit confused. Let's just take a look at the action groups. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is really interesting. I, I don't know why, but uh, it seems he's using his action groups to actually perform the staging. So. So yeah, let's let's give it a go. I, n I never actually did that, but uh, yeah, okay, fine. Well, let's uh, see if, if that'll actually work. It'll obviously work, but uh, uh, I, I don't know anybody using the actual action groups to perform the whole stage launch, but uh, I guess I guess it's fair enough. So well, let's uh, take a look at this and let's see how it actually works. So let me hit T. He says after usually between 5 to 10 kilometers, the thing blows up. So let's just see exactly what happens. And uh, put in full fuel and then I'm going to hit number one. So far, so good. So up we go, we do have... Uh, all engines are activated, so that's pretty cool. All as well. And now we do have overheating, of course, this is our mainsail, so I don't know if you know about this, that the mainsail does overheat. So you do gotta crank down the, uh, the power a bit, so the, the overheating of your engine doesn't blow up. So between 5 to 10 kilometers, you said it actually wiggles out of control. So, so far, we did crank down the power just a bit. And, uh, so far so good. I don't exactly know when to release stage 2 because it seems that your, uh, SRBs are gonna finish before your actual, uh, smaller engines. So I'm probably gonna carry it a bit before I release the other engines. I don't know if I should hit space. Two. Oh no, three. Okay, no, no, I got it wrong. Okay, very wobbly, so I'd of course uh, put some reinforcements there. But uh, so far, so good. We're at the 10,000 meter mark, so no problems at all. I don't know why. You might have a wobble due to the... Uh uh, okay, no control whatsoever. No control whatsoever. So that's probably due, due, due to the actual wobbling over there. Due to the wobbling over there. Once you switch off the SAS, it just goes out of control. I think it's due to the actual wobble. Okay, never mind. I, I did like... Uh, find a few issues with this thing that I would fix right, right off the bat. So, uh, first off... I'm a little bit confused. I do understand you're trying to make an asparagus with these two, but uh, I'm a little bit con confused why you have this actual fuel line. I do believe that this fuel line is more than enough, so let's just remove these. That should be fine. And now let's actually set up the staging correctly. I, li I like to use the actual space bar. I like to use the action groups for the solar panels instead. So let me just set up the staging first. So let's uh, take a look at that. That's first. So first off, I want uh, the engines the uh, smaller rockets, I don't know what the hell they're called, down and uh, the uh, large one, down including the crane as well. Okay, that is done. We know the solid rocket boost is finished first, so that's there, that is next, yep. And then after that, we know that the smaller engines finish next, so we gotta find that. And that is that there, so let's move that down there. And then we have the four engines and then the release. Now, uh, the bottom part is pretty much set. All we have here... Wh why isn't this connected, though? You have a thing that's not connected. So anyways, I'm going to use this to actually solidify our uh, our top tank so it doesn't wobble as much. So remember that wobbling, that should hopefully stop it from wobbling. And now let's take a look at the top part. Remember the cones don't really affect the, the drag now, so there's no real point of keep putting them on. But anyways, I'll keep it on because I'm trying to stay as uh, close as to your design as possible. So we'll just keep them on. This will just pretty much uh, make you burn a little bit more fuel. Also, I don't know... Uh, 
Okay, okay, I see. Just, just from the design, I, I think uh, what you're trying to do is you're going to dock this, and then you're going to get rid of the actual uh, rockets. All these four stages are going to be uh, decoupled and shot off into space. So you're just trying to... You, this is like a one-shot thing. You're just trying to dock this thing and then get rid of all the rest. Because if it wouldn't be, then I'll tell you what's the point of having uh, three tanks on these rockets. I'd, I'd make separations, of course, because I think two of these tanks will pretty much finish. Or maybe two and a half tanks of fuel should be finished. So when you're approaching your target, you might be left with just a little bit of fuel so uh, that's pretty much it in terms of that now let's do the action groups um, let's just get rid of all that I don't know I just uh okay action groups one what I do is I'd uh, make the undocking node decouple on docking node and then that's one and then action group two actually hold on when that launches yeah what I could do with uh, the decouple on dock I could also link it to my engines activate engines so like that when I decouple I activate the smaller engine so that's perfect so that's the one thing I'll need to activate because I don't have I don't have a decoupler here so I, I can't add it to my staging system so that's another thing now since you're getting rid of all these once you dock I presume you're just here to supply this unit then I don't really know what's the point again of these fuel lines because there's no real fuel on this uh, item itself on this object item itself so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get rid of the fuel lines as well this is just uh, I guess uh, a habit of making it as efficient as possible uh, again, I might be wrong. Again, the, the, the fuel flow might be completely off, but I don't know. I'll see how that goes. But so far, yeah, I'll, I'll leave everything else the way it is. Unless you want to keep the fuel lines, it doesn't really make a difference for, for the actual visual effect. I guess it might look nicer, but uh, for the technical effect, it really doesn't change anything because you got no fuel here. Now, I also noticed you don't have any batteries and stuff, yeah? So you're pretty much going to be low on power, so you're going to have to make it really, really quick. In terms of uh, deploying your solar panel, talking about the solar pr panel, did I actually put a? No, I didn't. Uh, action group for that? No, I didn't. Okay, cool. So what's going to happen is we're going to launch. This going to decouple. This going to decouple. This is going to stay burning, and then we're going to undock and burn our small little things and get into orbit. So let's let's see how it goes. Launch. Clear, and this time I'm going to be using, of course, the, the staging system instead of the action group's keys. So hopefully that'll be a little bit useful. Again, same thing, I'm going to keep on the SAS. Now, another cool thing to remember is uh, the one good thing that you did pick these rockets, the larger size rockets, or the T-30s, they don't have gimbal. Okay, gimbling means that the actual rocket uh, slightly varies or moves between 5 degrees, you know, which is very useful in terms of turning. For example, if you want to turn your rocket and you have gimbal on when you push WAS and either rocket in a way also moves the, the uh, what is it, the exhaust, well, it's not really an exhaust, whatever. Well, yeah, whatever, the exhaust of the rocket moves, it's actually, it's, it moves a little bit to help you turn the rocket, so... When you have a lot of rockets at the bottom, make sure to disable gim gimbal for all the outer rockets. Only keep the gimbal on for the center one. So this is fine because this one doesn't have gimbal. But in case you have the smaller version or any other rocket that does, maybe even the main sails, make sure to disable all the gimbals from outside and just keep the center one with gimbal on. Otherwise that might, might cause your ship, of course, to shake and, and break apart as well. So that's pretty much it. Let's uh, give it a launch and see what happens here. I'm not using actually MegJeb. I know MegJeb is on, I just, I just don't use it. I, 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 honestly, I never use it, so I have no idea how to use the damn thing. So, uh, so. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. What the hell am I doing? I forgot about, of course, the, the, the mainsail fix. Because I don't want to slow down just so we don't overheat the damn thing. I don't know if you looked at my tutorial playlist. It has like a bunch of cool tips that you could use uh, as well. So, let's take the smallest tank because we don't want to add too much weight. Okay, then let's go for the structures. We're going to add the actual... There we go. We're going to reinforce it as well so it doesn't shake. Okay, and then we have that. So now we don't even have to bother with the actual uh, overheating. You should take a look at my uh, playlist tutorial. I will stick it again in this video. Because uh, that has a bunch of cool things. And if you do have the time, really watch all the tips and tricks. 
So there's there's a couple of stuff that you might like as well as the the controls, basic stuff and controls. But still, it's it's useful to know. So anyways, l let's give this another go. Now I don't have to deal with the damn overheating. Okay, maybe it's a little bit of extra weight, but who really cares? Uh, now the engine actually going on its own, so that's fine. So we're off. We're off. And uh, so far, so good. Another good thing is I'm going at 100 and 100 meters per second. Try to keep it below 200 meters per second until you reach the 7,000 mark. Otherwise, you're burning a little bit more fuel. I know it, it won't kill you, but you know, still, it's 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 good to try not to burn any additional fuel if you do really want to be as efficient as possible. So you don't have to. But you know, I'll, I'll do it now just to keep it as much efficient as possible. So. Okay, we're at seven thousand. I'm gonna crank it up. The other one's gonna finish soon as well. Get rid of that as well. Okay, now we don't have any wobble, you noticed? There's no wobble. So you didn't read the need to reinforce the actual uh, tank. Okay. And uh, that's it. Now we're just uh, pushing out. We are just pushing out now. So yeah, I do presume when you're going to dock, you're going to just throw out all these and just dock it as this unit itself. Again, another thing I would recommend, I don't know why you have so many S, uh, SAS units on it, but uh, never mind, I guess, never mind. Because with the new SAS update, it won't really eat up your SAS as much, so, so it's really fine. We're at 25,000. I think we should be able to get this into space, I'm not sure, but it should be fine. A little bit low though. Again, another thing I would recommend, instead of having the solid rocket boosters, uh, just, just add more asparagus uh, mainsail staging systems. Yeah, it's, it's more efficient, way more efficient than adding SRBs. But again, that would change the look of your ship, and I did try to keep it as, as close to your design as possible. So that's something that uh, you might want to keep in mind. I don't want to cut the power until I actually get to that point. Okay, we've got to decouple the node. Switch. We are increasing with our speed, so... See what I mean? Like, technically I'd like to start I'd like to start with these when I'm already uh, nearly having an orbit. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like to do it so long. So, anyways, let's cut the engine. Let's get up into space. Let's put on our SAS so we can actually move around. Okay, yeah, so I think we should be able to get an orbit from this. Let's take a look at our resources. Yeah, electricity, you see, you have 20 units, so that's a little bit risky. But yeah, still, it's a really cool uh, sol solar panel thing you got here going, so... Uh, it's really cool. I don't know how exactly you plan to dock this with so little fuel, though. I would still recommend switching your SRBs with uh, asparagus mainsails. But again, if you want to stick with this design, you like this design, then whatever, just stick with it. Let's go more to a 90 degree angle. Again, we gotta pick up, remember, the 2200 meter speed, so. You see, T40, T38 means we're getting closer. I don't want it to get that close, because T38, T37, so I'm gonna move back again. Yeah. Maybe to the 90 degree mark. T36, so it's going up again. No, we don't want to, we don't we don't want to go that. T37 seconds away. Oh, I don't mind getting closer to the apple apps, so we're gonna burn less fuel. So. 36. Yeah, let's get a little bit closer. Let's get like 10 seconds away from it. So yeah, as mentioned, one tank is gonna be nearly completed. 
going on our second tech. We're nearly there, actually. 1,600 meters per second. We got like 600 meters per second to go. 37. As we're speeding up, of course, you notice that it's going a little bit further, so I'm going to be closing in the gap. And speed is going way, way more. Let's see what's the maximum vacuum we do have on this. Specific impulse, 390. Let's go completely 90 degrees now. And, uh... The cool thing as well might, might be, do you have any lights on? Actually, yeah, you couldn't really because you don't have enough batteries. But what you could have maybe put is like a light here so you can actually see the docking port. That would also be a nice addition. Put like maybe dual lights here so uh, they light up. The flashlight, not the spotlight. Spotlight's too damn strong, so you'll be pretty much blind. You won't see anything. But the flashlight so you can light up the dock, docking port since you're going to be out on either dock. If you're going to be docking on any side, it's good to have some light there. So you could stick as well a small little... Uh, the floodlight here, floodlight here, floodlight here. You know, you can, or maybe quad floodlights. You know, but again, you gotta understand when you're gonna put on the quad floodlights, you don't have enough uh, batteries to uh, to sustain it for a long time. So make sure you either stick on some batteries or really just stick on a single floodlight. Yeah. So it's really up to you how you decide to do that. Anyways, this is like my tips in terms of what you should do with your build. So uh, th that's uh, pretty much it, I guess. You know. And, uh, if I wanted to dock, I pretty much docked. As you do see, I do have nearly the same orbit. And boom. And I'm really there. Let's take a look at my fuel capacity. I think we should have enough to get there. We have one and a half tanks of fuel left, so more than enough to dock with my ship. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you liked it as well. I hope I helped you out and gave you some cool tips in terms of how to get your thing into space. And if you guys want to send me your build in case you're having problems, please feel free and I'll help you out. See you guys. Happy gaming. Bye.